Are there any flowers on Sunday? <laughs> kind of slippery. Thank you.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, the Good Shepherd, laid down his life for the sheep, we give you thanks for your faithful servant, Janani Luwum, who after his Savior's example gave up his life for the sake of his flock. Grant us to be so inspired by his witness that we may know peace with oppression, but live as those who are sealed with the cross of Christ, who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Ecclesiasticus. Watch for the opportune time and beware of evil, and do not be ashamed to be yourself, for there is shame that leads to sin, and there is a shame that is glory and favor. Do not show partiality to your own harm or deference to your downfall. Do not refrain from speaking at the proper moment, and do not hide your wisdom. For wisdom becomes known through speech, 
and education through the words of the tongue. Never speak against the truth, but be ashamed of your ignorance. Do not be ashamed to confess your sins, and do not try to stop the current of a river. Do not subject yourself to a fool or show partiality to a ruler. Fight to the death for truth, and the Lord God will fight for you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm number 119, found What are the verses? I'll tell you what the page number is. <laughs> it's verses 41 through 48. 766. Did you find it? Okay. 766. Thank you. <laughs> Let your loving kindness come to me, O Lord and your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have a word for those who taunt me, because I trust in your words. Do not take the word of truth out of my mouth, for my hope is in your judgments. I shall continue to keep your law. I shall keep it forever and ever. I will walk at liberty, because I study your commandments. I will tell you of your decrees before kings and will not be ashamed. I delight in your commandments, which I have always loved. I will lift up my hands to your commandments, and I will meditate on your statutes. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing here heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today, the church celebrates the feast of Janani Lewuam. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And you can tell from the red that he was a martyr. We often think of martyrs as people in ancient history, early church martyrs, people who lived under Roman persecution. But the truth is, there have been martyrs in every age. Martyr is simply a, a word that means witness. And 
We remember those who have died for their faith as being prime witnesses to the gospel. If you go to Westminster Abbey in London, above the great west doors of the church are a series of kind of small statues of martyrs of the 20th century. Among those are Martin Luther King, Oscar Romero, the Roman Catholic Archbishop in El Salvador, Maximilian Kolbe, who was part of the Nazi resistance. I believe, I can't remember, I believe Dietrich Bonhoeffer is in that number. Um, there's, there's another person who was a witness in the middle of the uh, great cultural revolution in China in the 20th century. Um, and also, uh, there are a few more, including Janani Luwum, who was the Archbishop of Uganda from 1974 until his untimely death in 1977. So, not all that long ago. Uganda, if you remember your history, was under the control of a dictator, Idi Amin, and Janani Luwum, who became Archbishop of Uganda, uh, who was a, a leading Christian voice in that country, was heavily critical of the dictatorship and the atrocities done to the people of Uganda under Idi Amin's rule. The story is that uh, he kept being outspoken and they decided to bring him in for questioning. And the alleged incident is that after being taken in for questioning, he was killed in a car crash. the government attempting to cover up what had happened did not return him to his family but flew him uh, to his home village or took him to his home village. They had him under his remains under um, soldiers guard. The idea was to keep looking after things in the sealed casket until his burial. However, at one point the soldiers left and they opened the casket and they saw that uh, he had been uh, shot through the mouth and there a bullet wound at the exit. Um, this was a fairly common thing going on with um, political dissidents in Uganda at the time. And so he is remembered as being a witness to the faith in the midst of incredible injustice, not in ancient times, but in our own. Uh, if I'm not mistaken that his death uh, resulted in statements from the Carter administration. This gospel lesson, it's interesting, the gospel lesson that we have is one from Holy Week. And I believe this is also the gospel lesson for Holy Cross Day. And the uh, proper preface at the Eucharist, I, I looked it up, this set the uh, Missal before the service. The proper preface is um, that of 
Holy Week. It's a very unusual choice, usually with a saint. There are, there are a couple different saint options. There's one, there are apostles and um, people who, there's one about being lights in the world and their generations. And um, we rarely get, even for, for martyrs, the direct reference to Holy Week and the idea of those who die for the faith acting and imitating Jesus in his own crucifixion and death. We are reminded in this gospel lesson, it says, now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be drift, driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. That being lifted up from the earth, um, if you continue on with the gospel lesson, that it's, it's a reference to the cross. And uh, we also have this, less a grain of wheat falls from the earth and dies, it remains a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. We have in the martyrs of the church the seedbed of Christian faith in very profound ways. It is said that uh, Uganda today is one of the most heavily Christian countries in the world. It's perhaps a bit unfortunate that our relationships between the Episcopal Church and Uganda and, and other parts of Africa, which have incredible Christian witness, it's unfortunate perhaps that those relationships have been strained over the past, at least the past 20 years. And, and I'm not in saying that, suggesting that what we have done in our own life as the Episcopal Church, should we should have made different decisions. I, I, I actually stand by what um, we have done over the past 20 years and even longer in terms of uh, a direction we have taken as a church. But it is unfortunate that the relationships have been strained because we have in this witness an incredible inspiration to all of us, perhaps to a church that, at least in our own time, feels a little more a church that struggled in continuing its own witness in the midst of increasing secularization. We are reminded, and people like Janani Lubuam, that we are called to be witnesses. We're not necessarily going to go out there and Hopefully, none of us will meet our own deaths in such a tragic and gruesome way as he did because of the faith we profess. But we're called to speak truth to power, to be reminded that the gospel is not just something for our own personal enrichment, but is something which is meant to be for the life of the world. And as we celebrate this feast day, we were reminded that we too are called to be witnesses. We too are called to profess the faith and make it known to the world to call out injustice to people who stand in positions of power, to encourage those who are in struggle, and to inspire the generations that will come after us. Past couple of nights, the seminary I attended had its annual, it's called the Paddock Lectures. It's the annual 
series of lectures that have uh, been done at general seminaries since the um, since the 1800s, almost every year. They had Diana Butler Bass, who is a historian and an author, um, give the lectures, and she had this uh, interesting observation that has stuck with me. Um, the great thing about where we are now is I didn't have to go to New York. I could watch the lectures wearing my shorts uh, mm -hmm. on my iPhone in the, on the deck of the rectory uh, while, while Bruno ran around and barked at passersby. Uh, but D Diana Butler Bass made this observation. Imagine the church 100 years in the future. And if they were going to write a letter to us thanking us for what we did, and if you think about any t type of church history, we could write a letter to people 100 years ago, perhaps thanking them for what they did. But if you're going to write a letter or think of somebody 100 years in the future writing a letter to us, thanking us for what we did, what would you want them to write? What would you want them to thank you for? I don't mean that because you should suddenly get a big head or something like that, but I say that as how are we called to be witnesses? How are we called to, to do things right now in our own time, to be faithful witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ? And as I finish up here, I think I'm just going to let you sit with that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. Today we pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, Michael, and Barry, our bishops, Moises, Bishop of the Dominican Republic, the Episcopal Ministry at the State College of Florida, our priests, Matthew and Bruce, and our deacons, Bruce, Joyce, and Kathy, we pray also for the candidates for election as Bishop Coadjutor. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for our companion diocese of Georgia, South Carolina, and Western Louisiana, and for the Diocese of Katanga in Province de l'Église Anglican du Congo. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Southwest Florida, and for St. Clement's Tampa, St. Thomas in, uh, say St. Thomas Chapel, and the Parish Episcopal Church in Parish, St. David's Inglewood, St. Edmund's Arcadia, St. Elizabeth's Zephyr Hills, St. Francis Tampa, the Day Spring Conference Center in Parish. And we pray for those whom we visit in care facilities or who are homebound or have ongoing prayer requests. Jackie, Jean, Hunter, Ann, Daphne, Shannon, Nancy, Tim, Mara, Tim, Charles, Bill, Deacon Joyce, Jill, Ann, Wynn, Chuck, and Kathy. We pray for those with immediate prayer concerns and requests, including those who are in hospitals or rehab. Guy, Judith, Father Brian, Harry, Maxine, Ron, Marion, Mary Jane, Corey, Alexandra, Beryl, Jim, Angela, Tom, Herb, Maureen, Kathy, Reverend Dave, 
Barbara, Ken, Chris, Sue, Doreen, Mary Jane, David, Ken, John, the Hayes family, Daisy, the Holtgren family, Ken, Danielle, Tim, Joyce, Gail, Greg, Terry, the Cunningham family, Kathy, and Lou. Pray for also for those whom we name silently or aloud at this time. And we pray for our military serving throughout the world. Sean, Nick, Laura, Christopher, Ben, Nicholas, Jennifer, and Lillian. We pray for those who celebrate their birthday today and in the coming week. Herb. We pray for those who celebrate their anniversary today and in the coming week. David and Sandy. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, and you, Holy Trinity, one God, and you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, us O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death. And I hold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear, Hear us, us, O Lord of life. Restore the wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear, Hear us, us, O Lord, Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have you declared, declared your, your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light, light we see light. light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal, Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us confess our need for God's healing grace. Compassionate God, we confess our weaknesses and our need for your strengthening touch. We confess that some illnesses stem from our own fault, while others are beyond our control. We turn to you, source of life, and ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the gifts of true healing and life in you. Amen. May the God of love visit you in your times of trial and weakness and raise you to newness of life.
Through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of Jesus invites us to new life in God and with each other. In the laying on of hands and anointing, we proclaim the good news that God desires us to be healthy and one in the body of Christ. You are invited to offer yourself whatever your sickness of spirit, mind, or body, and ask for healing and wholeness in the name of the Holy and Undivided Trinity.
May the God who goes before you through desert places by night and by day be your companion and guide. May your journey be with the saints. May the Holy Spirit be your strength. And Christ, your clothing of light, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy, help us who minister with the sick and dying to remember that though we may appear healthy, we too suffer from the universal human condition in the fallen world. Flesh withers and we must all die to the life we know. Therefore, O God, our help, teach us to be aware of our infirmities, the better to make others understand they are not alone in their illness. Restore us all in the love of the holy and undivided Trinity, which is our true health and salvation. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. seated. Grace to you and peace uh, for all of you who might be joining us online. We're glad that you are here with us and we invite you to support our mission and ministry. You can go to amionunciation.org and click the donate button. And we are very, very happy. We are very thankful for your support. do have a couple of announcements. The first is that Next week is going to be the setup for the White Elephant Sale, which will be on the, uh, the 26th from 9 to 1. And uh, I know that Sylvia Timmer, whose contact information is in the directory, can use all the help she can get. Uh, so we will have that going on next week. The following week is the move from the season after the Epiphany into Lent. And we, um, the men have put their heads together, the men's group, and we are going to um, pull off the Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper. Uh, it will be from 5 to 7 p.m. on March the 1st. We do have a sign-up sheet. We would like to have a, a better idea of who might be coming or the numbers to expect. Um, if you are attending, planning to attend, would you please sign up on the sign-up sheet in Low Hall? If you're watching us online and um, intend to be there, uh, you can give the parish office a call. Uh, we just want to have a little bit of a sense of where, where things are going to stand. And then, of course, the next day is Ash Wednesday. Our services are at 7 a.m., noon, and 7 p.m. If you have palms from previous Palm Sundays, uh, whether it's last year or previous years, uh, you can uh, bring them. Uh, and we, we've received a few already. I will take those and... Uh, burn them for the ashes for Ash Wednesday, uh, which I will do far, far away from the building when nobody's around because it is an awful, awful smell. And uh, as some of you know this, uh, I, I, I have never been asked this question until this year, um, this being my, the beginning of my seventh Lent here in Florida. Uh, only bring the palms that were used for Palm Sunday. We do not need your clippings from, <laughs> from your trees. Um, th those are wonderful, but you can give those to Waste Pro or whoever is doing your, your waste disposal in your, uh, your town. Uh, we will uh, be, uh, we only burn the ones that were blessed for uh, previous Palm Sundays. So uh, we bring those to church, we'll take care of them. And then as we go into Lent, we will be doing our Lenten program. Uh, we will do Stations of the Cross here at 5.30. Uh, we will have the Simple Soup Supper at 6. And we, we need some, we will have sign-up sheets and we could use a host for those. 
And then at 6.30 will be the program itself, and we'll make the program a, a available in a hybrid format if you, you would like to attend remotely. And uh, it is going to be on uh, the, the Lord's Prayer using a book written by Adam Hamilton, a United Methodist pastor in Kansas, in suburban Kansas City. And finally, t-shirts. I know some of you have uh, returned your t-shirt orders and I am being nudged to remind you t-shirt orders so we can place an order. And uh, I'm nudging myself because uh, Penny said, where's your t-shirt order? And I said, the, the little sheet of paper is on my kitchen table. I've yet to fill it out and write a check. Uh, but I am going to do that. <laughs> And I encourage you to do that too. <laughs> and now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer B on page 367. I invite you to stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people. In your words spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. 
For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he gave him thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Gabriel the Archangel, your blessed witness, Janani Lahuam, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
using the post-communion prayer in the back of the booklet, let us pray. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people with the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. We thank you for feeding us with this bread. May it strengthen us that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may embody your desire and be renewed for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.